How are we doing? Oh, how you doing? I heard it. <laughs> hey, it's good to be back. I've missed you guys. Was thinking of you guys over break. Um, as I was spending time with Jesus over break, my prayer for you guys is that the Lord would refresh you over break, that you'd be able to take um, quite a bit of time to just breathe, to relax, and to just allow Jesus to restore you because 2020 was a hard year. And I know um, the last time we talked, uh, especially during the Christmas season, it can be a hard time. So my prayer for you guys is that hopefully as you guys are going into a new year that you feel refreshed and restored. And I've had conversations with a few of you and you're like, we're going back to school, this is horrible. I don't want all the stresses of homework and all of that, but I will continue to pray that God gives you everything that you need and more as you continue on in 2021. Who is excited for 2021? We got a couple claps. I don't know if you're like me, but, and maybe you're not, maybe you'll just think that I'm crazy, but I'm always optimistic when I think of a new year. In fact, um, I love New Year's Eve and staying up till 12. This was the first time ever since I was like in elementary school that I didn't make it to midnight. I feel like when I turned 26, I became like a grandma and I was asleep by like 11 o'clock. I don't know, but normally I'm pretty excited to stay up till midnight because I'm so optimistic about the next year. I remember last year doing the same thing, being optimistic about 2020. We kind of know what happened. It's kind of a hard year. But the thing is, as I reflected back on 2020, I wouldn't change it because I got to see God do some refining in me this year that I needed to grow in my walk with Jesus. And I look out at you guys, as I've seen you guys this past school year, and God has done some refining in you. And I'm so excited to see what God has for you as individuals in 2021. I believe he has something special. And so as Brad and I talked about the beginning of the year into a new series, we thought it would be important to start off with just a two-week series called Reset. Now, a lot of us are pretty familiar with that word, right? You know, we all have different devices are from our school laptop and computer, you know, tablet, iPad, and then most of you in this room have a phone. And every once in a while, you need to restart your phone in order for it to work at its best. Because on a day-to-day -day basis, we are receiving and sending out information. You guys are all downloading all these apps, all these files, using up all your storage for pictures. And at some point, your phone or whatever device it is, it naturally just gets slower. It gets jammed. It gets a little inefficient. And so it's important and necessary in those moments to hit the reset button on your phone or whatever device it is in order for it to be at its best, for it to be fulfilling its purpose. And as I think about that in our life, we have purpose but sometimes I think we get so filled with unnecessary clutter and jam and distractions that I think we lose sight of our purpose. You know, our devices and our phones, they need a reset, right? But what about us when it comes to our faith? How do we reset our faith, reset our hearts? And a lot of you know, I love my definitions. So I looked up the definition of the word reset and I loved what it said. It says this, to set back to the initial state or to set anew. And I began to think about that and I began to ask the question, what would it look like for us to allow the Lord to set us back to our initial state, the state we were in right after we put our trust in him? What would that look like? Now, honestly, if I'm real with you guys, and I think a lot of you are on the same page as me, these last two or three months specifically have probably been one of the hardest few months of your life. I mean, things are constantly changing. Things are being taken away. People in your life, especially over these seasons, are maybe being a little inconsistent. Situations are inconsistent. I don't know if it bothers you, but it's like, are we in person, are we online? Are we doing school in person, are we doing virtual? Inconsistent. 
frustrations. A lot of you in these past few months have seen people, whether your friends or your family, have COVID or be quarantined. I mean, maybe there's some of you in this room that you're like, I've been quarantined like four or five times and I'm about fed up with it. And you're so frustrated. I think I talk probably three or four times a week hearing, and I know we've talked about it, but mental health, how big of a thing it is, especially right now. And I feel like over these last few months specifically, I've heard of just some traumatic accidents that have ha happened, whether that's a car accident or a split with a family member or a big disagreement within the family, health situations and frustrations, fears. And in the midst of that, even a lot of unknown situations of like what's to come and the anxiety that comes with that. And I don't know about you, and maybe it's just me that feels this, but I just have felt a heavy heart over these last two or three months. And as I was thinking about all this heaviness, I feel like in the midst of everything going on in this world, that we have almost become numb to Jesus. We've almost become numb to Jesus, the person during this time that we need more than ever. We become numb to. We forget. He's not a part of our daily life. And over these last few months as I had conversations, especially over the last few weeks with students and leaders and friends of mine, I feel like God is just a every once in a while type of choice or a Wednesday night at youth group type of choice or when things are going well, I'm gonna choose God type of choice. And I feel like even a lot of us right now in our life, if I'm just honest, and maybe you could disagree with me, there's just a lot of people I feel like that don't really care about the choices that they're making. They're just living in sin. And they don't really wanna change, they don't really wanna do anything about it. It doesn't really affect them, it doesn't really bother them. People being content with where they were at in their relationship with Jesus in October to the same as it is now. People okay with doing the bare minimum and their faith, putting in limited effort because it's almost like it's lost its value to us, its importance in our life. And I don't know about you, but I feel like for me specifically in these last few months, it's been hard to get myself motivated just to do things because it's like, well, are things gonna change? Gotta be flexible. Are we in person, not in person? And I feel like it's almost somehow transitioned at some points to my faith, and maybe you can relate to me, where we felt unmotivated in our faith. Maybe you guys have heard, I talked about it a few years ago at summer, summer camp, of this the word apathy. I feel like during these last few months, we might have gotten apathetic heart. We've lost motivation. We've lost care about our relationship with Jesus. And so with all that being said and the heaviness and I feel like the apathetic hearts that I'm sensing over these last few months, as we walk into 2021, what does it look like to reset our faith, reset our hearts to Jesus, to align with him? And tonight, I wanna look at a passage of scripture um, that maybe some of you have heard, maybe some of you don't, and I'm just gonna be honest with you. I feel not qualified to teach on it. It was a hard passage. I remember learning it in high school, I'm like, what does that mean? I don't understand, like, let's just move on. But as I prayed through this message and prayed through this idea of reset and aligning our hearts to Jesus, I just feel so led that Jesus continues to draw me back to this passage. And so I wanna invite you to open your hearts to this passage and what God has to share with you as we look about what it means to reset and align our hearts to him. So we're gonna talk about the parable of the wineskins. Now, maybe some of you have heard it, maybe not. But if you have your Bibles, I wanna invite you to turn to Luke chapter five, verses 36 through 39. Luke chapter five, verses um, 36 through 39, it says this. No one tears a patch from a new garment and sews it on an old one. If he does, he will have torn the new garment and the patch from the new will not match the old. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. 
If he does, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out and the wine skins will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured into new wine skins. And no one after drinking old wine wants a new, for he says the old is better. Okay, so let me break this down for you a little bit. I remember reading this in, uh, in high school and being like, okay, great. What does this mean? So it might help us if we understand the idea of what a wineskin is. So a wineskin, and we're going to throw up a picture here if you can see it. I don't know if it'll, it's kind of hard to see. But a wineskin is basically a bag that is made from an animal skin that holds wine. So most often it came from a goat and they sewed it up to make kind of like a bottle and then they would pour wine in there, okay? Now, some of you might not care to know this. I didn't really know much about wine, but I I studied up this week, so listen up, and it might sound sciencey, but it's important to the passage, so stick with me here. So, when wine is new, it's in a state of fermentation, and so it bubbles and expands as the fermentation gases are released. And so, when you have a new wine skin, so a new type of almost container to hold the wine, it can absorb and stretch because it's a new wine skin. And it slowly will do that until the wine in the fermentation process is complete. Are you still with me? You kind of get what I'm saying? Okay, so when you put new wine in an old wineskin container, it, you can't really do that because it's already been shaped and it's no longer flexible. In fact, if you were to pour new wine into an old wineskin, the wine would just go through and the wine skin that's holding the wine would break. Okay, so a lot of you are like, okay, that's great. I understand the context. What does that have to do about my faith? Okay, so here, let's go into a little bit of the context here. So this talk about wine skins comes right after a discussion about patching the garments, which we read in the sentence before. But these parables are directed to the Pharisees. Okay, and these Pharisees are criticizing Jesus. They are not happy with Jesus. They are not happy with Jesus because he is hanging out with the sinners and the tax collectors, and he is breaking all of their rules because they have strict rules that they need to follow. And Jesus is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm telling you, I'm coming and I'm bringing something completely new is what he's saying. That he wasn't something they could simply add on just so on like a patch like they talked about, but it's something new, that he came to turn everything inside out and upside down. And all of the Pharisees, they believed that they had to do all these great things and follow the law, all these good works, just so they could be in good upstanding. But Jesus is saying, that's, that's not what I'm, what I'm talking about here. Jesus' teaching could not just be added to their old wineskins. In fact, what they needed to do was to get rid of their legalistic behaviors and their righteous behaviors and actually start with a fresh new wineskin to start anew. They needed a reset with the gospel of grace. I think as it relates to our lives, we try to add Jesus to what we already kind of believe. I think sometimes we like to pick and choose different parts of Jesus or different parts of scripture that we want and keep those and then the ones that we don't really wanna follow, we're like, ah, oh, no, forget about those. And Jesus is something completely new that can't be merged with something that's old. But how often do we try to maintain the old ways of this world while still trying to include Jesus on the side? He desires to bring new wine out of us, but I think sometimes we keep going back to our old ways, old wineskin. And I believe that Jesus didn't simply come to just patch up our broken and tattered lives, but he came to give us completely new ones. At the end of the day, I think the big core message out of this parable is we can't put new ideas into old mindsets. And we can't get new results with old behaviors. Let me say that one more time. We can't put new ideas into old mindsets. 
and we can't get new results with old behaviors. I think as you start the year, everybody does their whole New Year's resolution thing. And one of the biggest New Year's resolutions that we see is people trying to just control their weight. And I think what most of those people fail to do is address the permanent changes in their eating habits. They're trying to put the new wine of a trimmer and thinner body into an old wineskin of established and ingrained poor eating habits. And it just doesn't work out. Maybe some of us can relate to this in other regards in our life. We want freedom in our life, but we continue to make choices that weigh us down and lead us to guilt and shame. We want to live a life that is pushing us in the right direction to be the best version of ourselves we want to be, but yet we hang out with people that don't necessarily bring out the best in us. Or we want to do well in school, but yet we procrastinate to the very, very last minute and we don't do as well as we had hoped or know that we are capable of. Or we want to see Jesus do something in our lives, but yet we're living in so much sin. Or maybe for some of us, we, we want to hear from Jesus, but we're so distracted by what we have going on in our lives and our priorities are out of line. Or even for some of us, we, we want to feel Jesus, but yet we're not in the word. We're not spending time with him, whatever that looks like. We can't get new results with old behavior. And some of you are sitting here tonight wanting to be in a different spot with God, but I think maybe you're still stuck in some old behaviors. And Jesus is saying, let me bring new wine out of you. Let's have a reset. So how do we allow Jesus to bring new wine out of us? How do we have a reset and align our hearts with Jesus? I wanna give you three things that actually start with the letter R, three R's that I believe we can take from this passage and help reset and realign our hearts with Jesus. And the first is we need to repent. Uh, like I said earlier, I feel like we are in a season of laziness, maybe some hypocrisy, and apathy. Just no motivation or no care. And I believe one of the best places to reset and align our heart with Jesus is coming to him in repentance. Now, last year at Winter Retreat, I talked about the word repentance, and it's a turning away from something and a turning to Jesus. A turning away from the areas in our life that we know are wrong, that we know that aren't necessarily pushing us to Jesus, but coming to a point of sorrow and repentance, a turning. Now, when I say a turning, a repentance, it means a turning which involves like a movement, it involves a response, it involves like a change. Just like when we talk about the word reset, when you reset something, there's a change that happens, right? Same with, with this idea of repentance. When we repent, we turn. It requires a change. Now, we don't have to do that change alone. The change comes through Jesus and we need Jesus' help. And Jesus wants to bring new wine out of us so that we aren't going back to the old wineskin. Because as we read in the parable, that's not gonna work for us. It's a turning away from laziness. It's a turning away from gossip. It's a turning away from sexual temptation and sexual indulgence. It's a turning away from pornography. It's a turning away from things that we know we shouldn't be doing or know we shouldn't be watching or know that we shouldn't be saying. A turning away from envy and pride and comparison a turning away from anything that you know in your heart that is not honoring to God. And I say this, and I think it gets tricky because I feel like there's a lot of us that maybe don't feel like we need to change or really care to change because, you know, like I just talked about, it's that mentality like, whatever, I'm fine. But I want to challenge you tonight that you would allow the Lord to convict your heart. I remember a moment, my sophomore year, a lot of you know some parts of my story, where I went down the wrong path and made my own choices and basically decided for a year to not follow Jesus. And I had a moment. My heart was so hard, I did not want to change. 
And I had a moment where I opened up my heart to God. And in that moment, I had a moment of sorrow and repentance of returning to Jesus and saying, I don't want to live my life for myself. I want to do life with you, Jesus. Would you allow the Lord to work on your heart tonight, if that's you? What area of your life would you say you need to make right with God? What area of your life would you say you need to make right with God? To reset our hearts, we need to start with repentance, but I think the second one, which is super important, is remembrance, to remember. Now, I hope Brad and I do a good job enough of reminding you weekly who Jesus is and what he's done. I was sitting um, over Christmas break and was spending time with Jesus, and it's just like I have these moments where I just sit and sometimes just cry, uh, thinking about who Jesus is, the gift, like what he's done in our life and the hope that we have in that, that a man would come to earth and would get in my, my place would pay for my sin, go up on the cross, be betrayed by his friends, lied about, mocked, spit on, thinking of me. I think sometimes we forget that. And then the best part of the story, providing us hope after his resurrection, that we have purpose in life. And I think sometimes that's a great place as we reset our hearts to just remember who Jesus is to us. I'm sure there's so many of you in this room, you can go back to the moment. Even think about that now, when you first put your trust in Jesus. That special moment where you surrendered your life to him. And the days that followed, you were so joyful about your decision. You're trying to figure out who Jesus is and what that means for you. And maybe for some of you in this room tonight, like your, I guess, goal at the end of the night, your reset is to, for the very first time, put your trust in Jesus. And I want to encourage you, it's not hard. It's not complicated. It's just declaring with your mouth that Jesus is Lord asking him for forgiveness, and declaring him Lord of your life. And I wanna encourage you, if that's you tonight, that you would talk to your leader. Because I believe Jesus, as we go into 2021, wants to do a hard reset in your life, and what a reset that would be. To turn from the old, come into the new. Finally, the last way I think that we can reset our heart to align with Jesus is we run to Jesus. I think we run to a lot of different things on a weekly basis. Our life is full of different activities. We're busy with work, friends, families. So much consumes our energy and our time. If we wanna really reset our heart on Jesus, we need to run to Jesus, run to the source. John 15, five says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And maybe some of you in this room feel stuck or stagnant or maybe unmotivated in your faith. And I wanna ask you, are you running to Jesus? Are you running to Jesus? And maybe some of you in this room are like, Sav, you don't understand, I am running to Jesus, I just don't feel Jesus. And I wanna encourage you and tell you to keep running. To keep running. Because he's refining you, he's working in you, he's doing something in you, he's bringing new wine out of you. You just may not see it yet but to continue to run, to fix your eyes on Jesus. As I was reflecting on the parable of the wineskins and this message, of course the song New Wine came on, and I don't know how many of you have heard that song, but the lyrics are so challenging to me. In fact, I wanna read them to you, um, because I want this to be the prayer of our heart, the prayer of my heart for this year, that we would allow Jesus to bring new wine out of us. So I wanna invite you to just close your eyes and to let me read these lyrics over you, to maybe make this your prayer as we close out tonight. It says this, in the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil, I now surrender. You are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me your vessel, 
Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. And then it goes to the bridge. Because where there is new wine, there is new power. There is new freedom. And the kingdom is here. I lay down my old flames to carry your new fire today. And what if we as a youth group left tonight carrying a new fire for Jesus, resetting our hearts to align with his, starting off by coming to him in repentance and remembrance and running straight to Jesus. Now, I don't know what 2021 holds for us, but I do know if we're running after Jesus, then we're in the best hands. Let's pray. Jesus, God, as we enter into a new year, at the end of the day, every day, all the time, we need you, Jesus. We need you. And so, Jesus, I pray that as we enter into this week, that you would just ignite a fire in us. God, that you would draw us close to you. God, that we would come to you and in repentance or remembrance or just running after you, God, whatever it may be, that we would be able to align our hearts with yours, God. Would you help us to care? Would you help us to remember what a gift our relationship with you is, God? How valuable that is, God, may we treasure that. Jesus, would you help us God, be obedient to where you're leading us. Would you help us um, not be taken down by the things of this world or the going back to our old ways, but would you help us stand strong? Would you help us be bold? And would you help us keep our eyes on you, God? We need you and we love you. It's in your name we pray, amen. All right, well, you guys are dismissed. If you are new here or don't know where to go for small groups, come see me or Brad. He's in the back. We'll get you situated into a small group. We are so glad you're here. We hope to see you back next week.